Hi, this is Matthew Cruz in Creighton Radiology, and welcome to the mini lecture on renal masses. Uh, specifically in this lecture, we're going to be focusing on solid renal masses, both benign and malignant. So let's get started. The typical presentation of a renal mass is hematuria, incidental finding on other imaging, or occasionally flank pain. Differentiating solid versus cystic renal lesions is a classic task of a radiologist, and this is discussed in a separate lecture. Just to mention, the Bosniak classification system is helpful for radiologists and urologists to classify a cystic lesion as suspicious or not suspicious. In this lecture, we're primarily focusing on solid renal masses. How do we prove that a mass is solid or containing soft tissue? The gold standard is contrast enhancement. And for this, we need a renal protocol study, either a CT or an MRI with both pre-contrast and post-contrast imaging so we can prove that the mass is enhancing. At the lower aspect of the slide, there is an exophytic mass at the lateral aspect of the right kidney. The left image is non-contrast, the middle image is nephrographic phase or venous phase, and the right image is delayed phase. If we were to measure density of the mass from the non-contrast to the nephrographic phase, it would clearly increase in intensity. So this proves enhancement and proves soft tissue. An alternate left, less commonly used method would be demonstrating blood flow on color Doppler ultrasound within a renal mass. At the top of the slide, there's an exophytic mass at the upper portion of the kidney, which is denoted at the left aspect of the images. On the right image, which is a color Doppler image, you can clearly see small blood vessels within the mass, indicating a solid mass. Once you identify a solid renal mass, this is a case where the most common diagnosis is not the one you would want as a patient. 90% of all solid renal masses are renal cell carcinoma. This means for the radiologist that it's number one on the differential for any enhancing renal mass. It also means that RCC remains in the differential even when the imaging appearance is more classic for another diagnosis. The more typical appearance of renal cell carcinoma is an exophytic solid enhancing mass with well-defined margins. However, the mass may not always deform the renal contour, so it may be within the kidney and not exophytic, or it may appear infiltrative. Typically, RCC presents in age 50s to 60s, with the exception of tumor syndromes, which often present at a younger age. Renal cell carcinoma has several subtypes. The most common subtype is clear cell carcinoma. This is 70% of all RCCs. These are aggressive, avidly enhancing tumors. On CT measurements, they usually enhance to more than 80 or 100 household units. They are often T2 hyperintense on MRI, and necrosis and hemorrhage are common imaging features. These have the worst prognosis of any common subtypes and a propensity for distant metastasis. In the right upper aspect of the slide, there is an exophytic, solid, enhancing mass of the lower pole of the left kidney. Note that the mass is avidly enhancing, similar to renal parenchyma. And remember that the kidneys receive 20% of the cardiac output and so demonstrate very prominent contrast enhancement. This is a clear cell carcinoma. The next most common subtype is papillary carcinoma. This is 10 to 15% of RCC. These are hypoenhancing masses with a relatively good prognosis after surgical removal. On MRI, they may appear T2 hypointense. Chromophobe carcinomas are less common and have a variable imaging appearance. They cannot typically be separated from clear cell carcinoma. A discussion of renal cell carcinoma subtypes should include mention of hereditary cancer syndromes. These comprise 5% of RCC. Von Hippel-Lindau syndrome is associated with vascular tumors such as pheochromocytoma and clear cell RCC, as well as cysts in multiple organs. Berthog-Dubé syndrome is associated with skin lesions, lung cysts, and chromophobe RCC. Tuberous sclerosis is associated with brain masses and lung cysts, as well as renal angiomyolipomas. 
clear cell RCC and oncocytoma are a less common feature. Medullary carcinoma is a rare tumor which occurs in young patients and is strongly associated with sickle cell trait. This is often a large heterogeneous mass and has a poor prognosis. Similarly, collecting duct carcinoma or Bellini carcinoma is a rare aggressive infiltrating renal mass. This is often metastatic at presentation. Some imaging features of aggressive renal cell carcinoma, which again most commonly represents clear cell carcinoma. There is a risk of tumor thrombus or tumor invasion into the renal vein and IVC. In the image at the left lower aspect of the slide, there is an infiltrative right renal mass and you lose the renal sinus fat on the right. The mass also extends into the renal vein and IVC, which is enlarged with hypodense tissue. There is a risk of hematogenous metastases with varied and atypical sites. The typical sites for metastatic RCC are lung, bones, lymph nodes, liver, adrenal glands, and brain. But multiple atypical sites can be seen, such as skeletal muscle, subcutaneous or retroperitoneal fat, pancreas, spleen, pleura, ovary, thyroid, bowel, the list goes on and on. The image in the right lower aspect of the slide demonstrates an enhancing mass of the right pectoralis muscle. This was a metastasis from a clear cell RCC. Next, we'll discuss some benign renal masses with typical imaging features. A renal angiomyolipoma is a fat-containing benign renal mass. It's diagnosed by identifying a mass with macroscopic fat on CT or MRI and no other suspicious features. The CT image in the right upper aspect of the slide demonstrates an exophytic left renal mass with multiple areas of low density. If we were to measure the density of these areas, it would measure as minus 40 Hounsfield units, typical of macroscopic fat. This is classic for a renal angiomyolipoma. While benign, if these lesions are larger than four centimeters, there is a risk of hemorrhage due to abnormal blood vessels. These patients should be referred to interventional radiology for embolization. Renal oncocytoma is a benign solid renal mass and the appearance typically overlaps with RCC. For this reason, they are typically resected. Imaging cannot reliably differentiate oncocytoma from RCC in many cases. Cystic nephrona is a multiloculated cystic mass which classically demonstrates herniation into the renal pelvis. This occurs in young males and middle-aged females. The CT image in the right lower aspect of the slide demonstrates this multi-septated renal mass which herniates into the renal pelvis, classic for cystic nephroma. Finally, we'll discuss appearances of renal lymphoma. There are multiple patterns of renal lymphoma involvement. The most common is multiple bilateral renal masses. The CT image in the left lower aspect of the slide demonstrates multiple rounded areas of hypoenhancement in the renal cortex compatible with multiple bilateral masses. Additional patterns include invasion from retroperitoneal lymphadenopathy, a solitary renal mass, diffuse infiltration, or perirenal soft tissue. The CT image in the right lower aspect of the slide demonstrates ill-defined retroperitoneal lymphadenopathy. This is compressing the IVC, which is denoted by the letter V. The lymphadenopathy is growing into the right kidney, indicated by the yellow airheads. This concludes the discussion on renal masses. Thank you.